Ever wondered what is really hiding beneath Oak Island soil? Think about it. Centuries of stories, clues, and rumors swirling around a single question. What is down there? Riches? Lost history? Or something even bigger? Let us dive in together with the Legina brothers and search for long-lost treasure and history in the mysterious Oak Island. As Gary Drayton found some surprising clues showing there is a path linking the swamp and the money pit, it seems this path was used to move treasure between the two locations. Archaeologists David McGuinness, Aaron Taylor, and Liz Michaels are digging into a mysterious structure on Lot 15. Meanwhile, metal detection expert Gary Drayton and Jack Begley are searching nearby, hoping to find more evidence connected to the recent discovery of an ancient Chinese coin. As they move away from the archaeologists, Gary Drayton and Jack Begley are unintentionally getting closer to the swamp. The area they are approaching would likely have been traveled by anyone working between the money pit and the swamp in the past. Gary detected a signal from the metal detector, indicating there might be a large piece of iron buried about eight inches deep. As Jack started digging, Gary noticed iron residues, confirming they were on the right track. They found another piece, smaller but wide, and Gary speculated it might be an axle. Jack questioned why these pieces seemed to line up, considering they were coming from the harbor in the swamp and heading back towards where the archaeologists were excavating on Lot 15. They have made quite a discovery. First, they found the peninsula down there, then the paved area, and now they have found ox shoes in an area where there has not been much disturbance. Yes, it seems like they are piecing together evidence of an old track. If they keep finding these items in one area and they line up, it could indeed be an old track leading back towards the Tar Hill. It is quite possible. Gary and Jack's discoveries of a pathway or track leading from the swamp to the stone structure on Lot 15 suggest the possibility of an operation to move cargo away from the swamp. The alignment of the findings and the nature of the items discovered point to a systematic effort to transport goods or materials from one place to another. The massive stone paved feature unearthed in the swamp a year ago and the mysterious anomaly detected by seismic scanning buried some 50 feet deep in the middle of a brackish man-made bog could indeed be linked to the operation of moving cargo away from the swamp. These discoveries may provide further clues to the activities and infrastructure that once existed in the area. It is quite a coincidence, or perhaps fitting, that they are back on track while Gary believes it could be an actual track, a sentiment Jack shares. While they continue their search, the detector signals again. Although the iron is completely buried in the ground, there is definitely something significant right there, waiting to be uncovered. It is promising that they are seeing rust while digging deeper, indicating they might be onto something interesting. However, when they finally unearth something resembling a pin, Gary is not convinced it is actually a pin. He has encountered similar items before, suggesting there could be more to this discovery than initially meets the eye. It is similar to horse and ox harnesses with the knobs on the end where they put the reins around. However, this particular item is heavier and much older, likely dating back to before the 1800. That was amazing. Ox shoes were never really anything to get too excited about until you find them in the proper context. While they might seem mundane on their own, finding them in the proper context can completely change their importance and shed light on past activities. It seems like they're uncovering evidence of an oxen trail that connects the paved area inside the swamp to the money pit. They're searching for tools and signs of activity between the swamp and where the archeologists are working. Finding such items would strongly suggest that some kind of operation or activity took place along that route in the past. Jack's idea is that before the establishment of formal roads or trails, people likely had to quickly create paths to navigate through the terrain possibly forcing their oxen through makeshift. As the Oak Island team kept excavating, they uncovered a stone pathway. While working on it, they stumbled upon a piece of charcoal. This finding could be linked to evidence of a sunken ship. Another thrilling morning dawns on Oak Island for brothers Rick and Marty Legina and their team. They are continuing to uncover two of the most incredible discoveries ever made in the 225-year search for a legendary treasure. Massive stone pathways have been unearthed in the southeast corner of the triangle-shaped swamp. 
One of these pathways may be leading directly toward the original Money Pit treasure shaft. To ensure a thorough and careful investigation of the swamp, they have enlisted the help of archaeologist Dr. Aaron Taylor. His expertise will contribute to the careful examination of the area and the proper documentation of any findings during the investigation. Tom has some questions for Aaron, and he is likely eager to hear Aaron's opinion on the discoveries made to date and what he thinks they might signify. Aaron's initial opinion suggests that the discoveries could indicate a road leading up to the uplands. This interpretation aligns with the idea that the stone pathways unearthed in the swamp may have served as routes for transportation or movement across the landscape. Aaron further suggests that they might have a rubbly pathway all the way down to that area. Aaron's speculation raises the possibility that there might have been a small harbor constructed somewhere nearby to unload goods or materials. The road they are uncovering would have required significant effort and labor to build, suggesting that it played a crucial role in facilitating transportation and activities in the area. The discovery of the stone pathway is indeed remarkable, and the team has never encountered anything quite like it before. The presence of pieces of wood suggests the possibility of cribbing underneath, which could explain what is keeping the stones in place. As Rick searched further, he did not find any wood or other materials. Aaron initially thought there might be some timbers present. However, they did discover another layer of stone underneath the one they were investigating. Feeling the firmness, Aaron sensed something substantial, like a thick-cut stake. As they removed more dirt by hand, they discovered some sort of cribbing or support structure underneath. This finding confirms their suspicions about the presence of reinforcement or support beneath the surface. The discovery of another layer of stones and wood cribbing by Rick poses interesting questions about the swamp's construction. It makes us wonder if Rick has found another important feature in the swamp road, or if there is a completely different structure below it. The presence of multiple layers suggests a careful building process and hints at deeper secrets waiting to be uncovered. If so, what is it, and why was it built? The observation that the structure appears to be deliberately cut and not of natural origin, especially considering its alignment under the prominent big stone, presents a compelling mystery. In response, the team plans to extract a sample for thorough testing. By subjecting the sample to detailed analysis, they aim to uncover crucial insights into its composition, potential purpose, and historical significance. The discovery of a chunk of fairly large coal amidst their excavation efforts is both unexpected and intriguing. Accumulating pounds of coal raises questions about its presence in the area. Given that coal doesn't float, it's unlikely to have been carried in by water currents. This suggests that someone deliberately left it there or that it holds significance within the context of the site's history. The discovery of charcoal on the stone pathway in the swamp adds an intriguing element to the ongoing exploration efforts. This finding suggests potential evidence of fire or burning activity in the area. Interestingly, one year ago, metal detection expert Gary Drayton unearthed a hardly burned strap, identified by blacksmith Carmen Lega as originating from an early 18th century ship. The fact that it endured a hot and sustained fire raises questions about the historical events and activities that transpired on Oak Island. The discovery of the hardly burned strap offers compelling evidence supporting a long-held theory by Fred Nolan. According to Nolan's theory, Oak Island was once two separate islands and a treasure galleon may have sailed between them. The theory suggests that the treasure galleon unloaded its precious cargo and was subsequently burned and sunk in a man-made swamp on Oak Island. The discovery of charcoal on the stone pathway in the swamp potentially serves as corroborating evidence supporting Fred Nolan's theory. The discovery of coal presents another mystery in the history of Oak Island. As far as the known search efforts go, coal wasn't used on the island until at least 1860 or later. This raises questions about the purpose of the coal found on the stone pathway. Since there was no need to burn coal for search purposes until much later, its presence suggests an earlier activity or use that remains unknown. Later that day, they stumbled upon another piece, adding to their collection of cut stakes. The presence of these cut stakes suggests that something was used to hold them up in the bog. 
The team is filled with excitement over the discoveries they have made, yet they are also left with more questions than answers. After successfully unearthing a ship's railing and pondering the mystery of the coal discovery, the team's swamp excavation faces a new challenge. Their progress comes to an abrupt halt as they encounter a large object obstructing any further searching. This unexpected obstacle presents a new puzzle for the team to solve. While excavating at the southern border of the Oak Island Swamp, Billy Gerhard and other members of the team have just unearthed what may be an important discovery. The newly unearthed discovery appears to be a very smooth and polished piece of wood, leading the team to believe it was not formed naturally. It resembles a handrail positioned over the top of some balusters. The craftsmanship and structure of the piece suggest intentional human design rather than natural formation. The newly discovered smooth and polished piece of wood, resembling part of a ship's railing found in the Oak Island Swamp, raises intriguing questions about its connection to the surrounding landscape. Its proximity to the nearby Stone Road, believed to have once been part of a ship's wharf, suggests a possible link to maritime activities in the area. Furthermore, the discovery potentially offers further evidence supporting the hypothesis that the swamp was once an open harbor. Examining the corners and overall smoothness of the discovered piece, it appears as though it has been carefully sanded down, resembling a rail. Billy's observations suggest that they may be onto something significant, as they seem unable to reach the bottom of whatever they're encountering beneath the swamp's surface. As the team delves deeper into their excavation efforts, they encounter a significant obstacle. They cannot reach the sand at the bottom due to an obstruction composed of wood or another material. Whatever lies beneath appears to be quite deep, blocking their progress and adding to the mystery of Oak Island. A large object blocking the excavator's ability to dig below where part of a possible ship's was just recovered. Two years ago, after conducting a seismic scanning survey across the entire swamp, the Legina brothers, Craig and the team, were astonished to discover a 200-foot anomaly. This anomaly eerily resembled the shape of a massive sailing vessel and was detected in the same area. It was very unusual. It was not just a dork around it. Despite subsequent drilling efforts failing to provide definitive proof of the object's identity, the team's recent discoveries and ongoing excavations suggest that they may be inching closer to unraveling the mystery. With the unearthing of significant artifacts, such as part of a possible ship's railing, and the discovery of obstructions hindering further excavation, the team's progress hints at imminent breakthroughs. The team has made another significant discovery, a finely crafted piece of wood that resembles a railing. This carefully worked piece adds to the growing body of evidence suggesting the presence of complex structures beneath Oak Island's surface. The team is encountering difficulties with digging properly, as the bucket is sliding along something that isn't rocks. This obstruction is hindering their progress, yet they believe that if they can get eyes down there, they will likely discover a lot more. A uniquely finished piece of wood emerged from hoarder depth during the excavation efforts. Gary Drayton, recognizing its distinctive characteristics, affirms that it closely resembles a ship's railing. The square hole observed in the wood further indicates its age and authenticity, suggesting the presence of an old iron fastener. The team's excavation efforts in the swamp consistently yield discoveries, even at depths as deep as 10 feet above sea level. However, they continue to face challenges as they encounter obstacles preventing them from reaching the bottom. Despite their efforts, they have not yet succeeded in penetrating whatever lies beneath the surface, obstructing their progress. Currently, they are scraping against this barrier. The team faces a frustrating setback as they are unable to see anything down the hole due to their inability to get close enough. The surrounding area is unstable, causing slumping and making it difficult to maintain stability for observation or further exploration. Rick has long held the belief that the swamp holds answers, serving as the keeper of secrets on Oak Island. Even in his youth, he pondered the significance of the swamp while examining a map in a Reader's Digest article. The presence of the swamp fascinated him, sparking questions about its role in the island's mysteries. Since childhood, 
He has pondered what lies beneath the surface and what secrets the swamp holds, and those doubts still linger in his mind. Building upon their previous findings, discovery of the ship's railing and other artifacts, the crew's focus shifts to Lot 13 in their quest for answers regarding Oak Island's historic past. Metal detector Gary Drayton, accompanied by the Legina brothers' nephew Peter Fernetti, arrives at Lot 13 with a sense of anticipation. In light of Terry Devo's new evidence suggesting a possible pathway leading from the stone wharf in the swamp to the money pit, Gary is eager to search the area for any important or valuable clues that may shed light on Oak Island's mysteries. As they head back to the uplands, Gary is filled with anticipation. He sees this as a crucial moment because finding more artifacts in the area could give the team a clear direction for excavation. Discovering additional evidence would be exciting, especially if it confirms the existence of a stone pathway leading towards the money pit area. Finding something significant would be a game changer for the archeologists, providing them with a well-defined area to focus their efforts. With plenty of flags marking potential excavation sites in the area and permission to dig, the team is poised for a productive day. Their hope is that each discovery brings them closer to unlocking the secrets. In accordance with the new community culture and heritage protocols, Gary meticulously scanned the area that morning, adhering to strict guidelines. However, he was only permitted to plant flags at locations where he detected signals indicating possible buried metal objects. This protocol underscores the commitment to respecting the cultural and heritage significance of Oak Island while conducting exploratory activities. With Larrick Nevin's documentation and professional approval of the area, Gary and Peter are now empowered to assess and interpret the significance of the detected targets. Gary stumbled upon a piece of aluminum cap during their search, carefully bagging it for further examination as they continued their exploration. Moving forward, Peter dug in response to another signal, unearthing a small piece of metal from the dirt. Upon closer inspection, Gary noticed spirals on the metal piece, concluding that it was not machine-made. Initially, Gary mistook the metal for iron due to its weight, but upon closer examination, it appeared to be lead. The spiral pattern on the metal intrigued them, as they had never encountered lead with such distinctive characteristics on Oak Island. To confirm its composition, they conducted the ultimate test, using a pinpointer to detect rapid vibrations, which would indicate the presence of iron. The discovery turned out to be iron, despite initial speculations. However, Peter raised the possibility that it could consist of multiple alloys, prompting further discussion. Gary acknowledged the potential for a mix of metals, but ultimately leaned towards identifying it as iron relying on his trust in the accuracy of the detection machines. The recovery of the object in such a unique location, just above the stone pathway, adds an intriguing dimension to their discovery. Recognizing the significance of its proximity to the pathway, they plan to subject it to XRF, X-ray fluorescence, analysis for further examination. Once Kelly completes the cleaning process, they anticipate gaining valuable insights into the composition and nature of the object. They bagged it and tagged it and went on to the next. During the final excavation of the season, the Oak Island team makes a monumental discovery, building upon the progress and insights gained from their careful exploration efforts throughout the season. Over in the Money Pit area, members of the Oak Island team are closely monitoring the excavation of the B4C shaft. As they delve deeper into the earth, Anticipation mounts, with the hope that they will soon uncover clues pointing to the existence of roads leading to a treasure chamber or an offset vault. Just five feet north of Borehole C1, the excavation at B4C is progressing steadily, inching closer to reaching the approximate depth of 90 feet within the so-called C1 cluster. In the C1 cluster earlier this year, the team made significant discoveries. Not only did they recover evidence suggesting the presence of wooden tunnels possibly dating back to the 15th century, but they also detected high trace evidence of both silver and gold. The discoveries in the C1 cluster have sparked speculation among the team. They believe they may have either located the general area of the original money pit or possibly a tunnel that could lead to an offset treasure chamber. 
This speculation arises from the evidence of 15th century wooden tunnels and the presence of high trace evidence of silver and gold detected in the area earlier this year. Despite reaching the final phase of their current effort, the team remains resolute and undeterred. They understand that the presence of a tunnel in the 90-foot horizon signifies proximity to the money pit, providing renewed motivation to continue their quest. Each time they dig, they eagerly await the next scoop, hoping it will reveal the long-awaited treasure. The presence of gold in the water suggests that gold was brought into the money pit at some point. During their excavation, the team uncovered bits of wood scattered throughout the area. Gary made a significant discovery, a large old iron fastener, which appears to be around 1,700 years old. Its crude appearance suggests its antiquity and adds to the intrigue surrounding Oak Island's history. Behold, amidst their excavation, they came across what they believe to be a hand-wrought spike, a remarkable discovery that presents an opportunity for detailed analysis. Every little clue, no matter how small, holds significance in their quest for answers. The spike, with its mushroom top and characteristics of forged wrought iron, is a substantial and intriguing piece of evidence. Its heavy and chunky iron composition hints at its age and purpose. The discovery of what appears to be red bands in the shaft resembles the bands found in cans, adding an unexpected twist to the Oak Island team's endeavors. This startling turn of events comes after they recovered remarkable evidence suggesting the presence of a potentially ancient wooden tunnel. As they continue their excavation efforts, a significant milestone is reached. Bedrock is encountered at a depth of approximately 130 feet in the B4C shaft. As they reach the bedrock, it signifies a significant milestone in their excavation efforts, suggesting that they are nearing the conclusion of their current endeavor. However, the team faces a time constraint, as they are out of time to conduct further excavations in the Money Pit area this year. Despite this limitation, the evidence uncovered from all five of the massive steel shafts they dug over the previous months indicates that the legendary treasure, sought after for more than two centuries, still remains buried somewhere below the surface. The question that looms large is, what will it take for Rick, Marty, Craig, and the team to finally recover it? This lingering question fuels their determination and drives their ongoing pursuit of Oak Island's elusive secrets. Rick reflects on the team's collective realization that the money pit is incredibly complex. This understanding underscores the importance of seeking out new technologies and applying them to their unique situation. Embracing innovative approaches has proven to be pivotal in driving the search forward. As they navigate the complexities of Oak Island's mysteries, they recognize the necessity of leveraging cutting-edge tools and techniques to uncover its mysteries. Despite their disappointment with the results in the money pit, there are reasons to remain hopeful. Scientists assert that substantial quantities of gold lie beneath the surface, supported by ample evidence. This knowledge fuels their determination to intensify their search efforts. Every exploration hole yields valuable insights, contributing to their understanding of the underground terrain. With definitive elevations for the tunnel in mind, they're equipped with crucial data for further exploration. Additionally, they possess significant artifacts that warrant testing, offering potential clues to Oak Island's mysteries. They have identified quality candidates for C-14 testing and are nearing the depth they refer to as the hole. Later that day, Marty Legina, accompanied by his business partner Craig Tester and metal detection expert Gary Drayton, convenes at the research center with blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg. The purpose of the meeting is to obtain Legg's analysis of the iron spike recently unearthed at a depth of more than 100 feet in the B4C shaft. The spike was found among the spoils from the money pit excavation. Carmen confirms that its size and structure are typical of a rock drill, commonly used for drilling holes or breaking up rocks during excavation. This insight suggests its role in the digging process potentially employed to break up a large boulder encountered during excavation. This type of drill would have likely been sharpened using a sharpening sway, indicating its antiquity. Such tools are very old, dating back to the same era as the swages. Two years ago, during their investigation of Lot 21, 
once owned by Freemason Daniel McGuinness, one of the original discoverers of the Money Pit in 1795, Rick Lagina, Gary, and Dan Hensky made a significant discovery. They uncovered two heavy iron swagas used for sharpening rock drills, which Carmen believed to date back to the mid-15th century. Could the rock drill unearthed in the B4C shaft provide further evidence that the team is on the verge of discovering the fabled treasure? The presence of the rock drill in the depths of the excavation prompts questions about the purpose of its use underground. Were the excavators creating caverns and caves, expanding the underground network for some specific reason? The rock drill's potential origins, dating back to medieval times, fuel speculation about its role in the excavation process. As one allows their imagination to wander, it's conceivable that such a tool could have been employed to chisel out chambers or carve through rock formations. If this hypothesis holds true, it suggests that the team may indeed be focusing their efforts in the right location. As the season draws to a close, the team faces the reality of running out of time for further investigation. However, the discovery of the rock drill compels them to delve deeper into its significance. They cannot simply walk away from such a significant find without thoroughly examining its potential implications. After expressing gratitude to Carmen for her insights and explanations, they refocus their efforts on uncovering more artifacts and clues. In light of the discoveries made in recent years across Oak Island, including the stone-paved area in the swamp dating back to 1200 AD and the 500-year-old stone road in the southeastern corner, as well as findings on lots 4, 8, and 15, the team is on the verge of uncovering the identity of those behind the Oak Island mystery. As boys, Rick and Marty Legina were captivated by the legend of a treasure hidden deep within the money pit on Oak Island. Despite the numerous attempts by skilled searchers over two centuries to uncover it, the brothers felt inspired to take on the challenge themselves as grown men. Over the course of more than a decade, alongside their dedicated team, they have tirelessly worked to unravel the mysteries of Oak Island. Through their efforts, they have not only demonstrated that the Oak Island mystery runs deeper than previously imagined, but also brought themselves closer than any previous explorers to finally recovering the long-lost treasure. Their journey is a testament to perseverance, determination, and the enduring allure of Oak Island's secrets. Later, Rick Legina and the team embarked on a highly anticipated dive operation with the aim of uncovering evidence of a shipwreck Along with his nephew Alex and other team members, Rick gathered in the war room to plan an eagerly awaited dive operation. They were joined by Tony Sampson and renowned underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence. They possessed data provided by CSR Geo Service. With over 50 years of experience as a treasure hunter and underwater explorer, Dr. Spence has located over 100 shipwrecks and unearthed artifacts worth more than $50 million dating back as far as the 15th the century. They asked Dr. Spence to review the CSR data and provide insights into the potential targets identified. Their goal was to determine if there were any valuable targets worth exploring through diving operations suggested by Dr. Spence's expertise and analysis of the data. The purpose of the dive was to investigate two mysterious targets identified in the CSR data. A week ago, Rick, Marty, and Craig commissioned representatives from CSR Geo Surveys Limited to conduct a magnetometer survey across the northern waters surrounding Oak Island. Remarkably, the scans revealed several intriguing anomalies, including one adjacent to Lot 5 and a massive object near Frog Island east of Oak Island. The latter could potentially be the wreckage of a large sailing vessel. Although Nova Scotia law imposes restrictions on treasure hunting in open waters, the team remains hopeful. Their aim is to discover evidence of a wreck, which could potentially enable them to obtain a special permit for more thorough investigation. At the spot now are Alex Legina, his cousin David Fornetti, diver Tony Sampson, and his team, along with underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence. They are gathered to investigate the waters between Oak Island and neighboring Frog Island. With a depth of 19 feet, they have dropped anchor and are preparing for the dive. Tony and Dr. Spence will be conducting the dive, 
aiming to collect more data regarding the metallic anomalies detected during the recent magnetometry survey. The target for the day is a cluster of magnetometer hits that suggest a potential shipwreck on the shore of Frog Island. However, due to environmental restrictions, they will only be able to conduct a non-invasive investigation of the ocean floor using cameras and handheld scanning devices. If evidence of man-made objects or human activity is found, the team can apply for a permit to excavate and remove objects from the area. Since the ocean floor is covered with vegetation, Tony Sampson is using an Aquascan DX200 handheld magnetometer. This device emits magnetic pulses capable of detecting iron targets buried up to 23 feet below the ocean floor. At a depth of approximately 20 feet in the waters between Oak Island and nearby Frog Island, diver Tony Sampson and underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence have confirmed the presence of a large metallic object buried beneath the thick vegetation on the ocean floor. This discovery is promising news for the team's investigation. To obtain a permit, they require visual confirmation of something underwater originating from a shipwreck. A magnetometer hit alone won't suffice. They need Tony or Lee to visually identify items such as a cannon, coin, ship timbers, or other artifacts on the ocean floor. These tangible objects will strengthen their case for obtaining the necessary permit. Due to the silt and vegetation obstructing their view of the metal object or objects they detected, Tony and Dr. Spence are expanding their search area. They aim to uncover any hidden debris that might provide clues to the nature of their discovery. Another magnetometer hit suggests the possibility that Tony and Dr. Spence have discovered further evidence of human activity, perhaps even the remains of a shipwreck. If confirmed, this discovery could be connected to the recent ship-related findings made by the team in the Money Pit area. Indeed, there were two areas on that shore where they discovered a buried railing, potentially part of a ship. The bottom of the ocean in that area consists of large rocks and dense kelp growth, which could easily conceal the remains of a sunken ship. All the evidence, including the expert opinion, indicates the presence of a shipwreck in the area. However, the current evidence isn't sufficient to obtain an excavation permit. Their best hope would be to return to the site and rely on the natural action of tides and possibly storms to uncover more evidence of the shipwreck. Once tangible evidence is exposed, they can capture images and apply for an excavation permit. The Oak Island team made a significant discovery while conducting a strategic drilling operation at the Money Pit area. They found gold on metal. On another thrilling day on Oak Island, the Legina brothers, along with their partner Craig Tester and team members, are engaged in a strategic drilling operation at the Money Pit. Their goal is to unravel a mystery that has intrigued explorers for 226 years. A week ago, the team made a remarkable discovery after finding wood at a depth of 88 feet in Borehole 52, which carbon dating suggested dated back to as early as 1488. Following this, they unearthed a mysterious piece of metal. Geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner conducted elemental analysis on it using an X-ray fluorescence device, revealing astonishing results. The metal was found to be either in close contact with gold or possibly containing gold itself, leaving Rick and the team astonished by the revelation. Located within the area known as the C1 Cluster, where existing boreholes have shown high levels of silver and gold, the team has developed a strategic drilling grid aimed at pinpointing the legendary Money Pit Treasure Vault. The next target on this grid is Borehole B4, positioned a mere 14 feet from D2. The C1 cluster appears to be the ideal location. The presence of gold on the metal is highly promising. If indeed the gold is accurately detected on the metal and there are no natural sources, then it strongly suggests that they are getting closer to the treasure. In this same area, the team had previously drilled into what they believed to be a tunnel at around 90 feet deep. If they don't find treasure in B4, their hope is to intersect a tunnel that could potentially lead them to it. They need to focus their efforts on the areas where they suspect there might be tunnels and narrow down their search accordingly. As the Oak Island team delves deeper into the mysteries buried beneath the surface, we invite you to join us on this captivating journey of discovery. 
Don't miss out on the latest updates and revelations from Oak Island. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay connected with our quest for answers. Together, let's uncover the secrets hidden within Oak Island's depths. Thank you for being part of our adventure.